Hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. We're going to be looking at the new Evercade carts that's been released in November 2022. This one is the C64 collection, not even opened yet. Really looking forward to this, it's a big one. It's home computers finally on the Evercade. Can't wait to get stuck into this. Let's go. Okay, let's have a look at the C64 collection. Obviously you can see here you've got the new designed um, sort of box art, which is really nice. I love the style of the new uh, box art. I love the, um, the front part. Not so sure about the back of it. Obviously this is now number one of the blue collection or purple I'm not sure yeah bluey purple um, and this obviously is the start of a new era because this is now the home computer collections could open the door for a lot of things like Amiga which we know is coming and maybe a few other things maybe Specky I'd love to see that and Amstrad I guess who knows what could come but yeah here's the back of it we're not got the full display of every game anymore which I think is a bit of a shame I like to see the, the sort of um, graphics of every game that's on here but Nonetheless, this is the new style. Um, it's got three games that they've highlighted and they've got the names of all 14 games at the top there. Um, I'm not saying this is the most classic games that you'll ever find on the Commodore 64. If you're a newbie to Commodore 64 and thinking this is the best Commodore 64 had to offer, then that's not the case here. It's just a selection of games. There's a couple of good games here, but this isn't one of... No, I wouldn't uh, regard this as being the classic games that you would find back in the day but anyway it is what it is maybe we'll see some of those classics at some point interesting new design I quite like it I like the front more than the back to be honest yeah let's open up see what we can see oh yes look at that that lovely cartridge that looks fantastic I love it the design of this is brilliant let's just have a look at this back of it yep it's got that this 64 logo which is obviously a copyright of uh, retro games which they've um, put on the back of the, the manual there, or the cart, sorry. Oh, we've got some freebies here. We'll look at these in a little second. So we've got the manual, um, full details of everything about the C64. If you don't know, this is some information about it. Um, I've still actually got my original C64. Um, it tells you there that please ensure you only use controller connected to port 1. Not port 2, that would have been funny. That's where most games from the Commodore 64 had to be in port 2 for some reason. Ah, you missed a beat there, Blaze. In some games you will need to use the virtual keyboard. You can activate this with the select button. So we'll, we'll cover that as we go. Because some games maybe need a little bit of, uh, sort of nudging here and there with the keyboard. Here's the summer games. A couple of pages to each game here, which is good. Oh, there's more pages actually. Four pages. That's quite helpful because some of these um, events do need a little bit of help. It's not clear which buttons you need to press. Winter games. Um, oh, there's a lot here. Impossible Mission Ho. Now, this is definitely one I would regard as a classic C64 game. And it'll be really good to be able to use the save states here. Um, and be able to maybe get a little bit further than I've ever been. Jumpman. That looks quite cool. Lee, that's another classic I would say. Obviously it used to be known as Bruce Lee, it's obviously dropped that for licensing purposes. We've dropped the Bruce part, poor Bruce. Gateway to Apsai, the movie monster game, Marauder. Stormlord, Subterranea, Idris Alpha, and Battle Valley. I'm not going to read all this just now. Alley Cat, Street Sports, and oh look at that, nice little bit at the, the back there about all the carts. Tick them off as you go. Interesting. Anyway, let's get the... Oh, before we get the cart up and running. You obviously need to look at this. This is a little secret that's been included. Now, if you don't want to know, you might want to jump ahead of this part. Um, I'll do this on the actual video. But this actually reveals a secret game. I'll reveal that in the video. I'll, I'll obviously give some um, warnings before I do it. In case you don't want to know and you want to discover it yourself. Okay guys, we're going to put this up onto the handheld first, just have a quick look um, and see what's happening before we get it onto the VS. Obviously it's kind of hard to do the video just by this, it's easier on the VS. So here we go, we've got the box art, it looks very similar to what we would have seen on the C64 Mini. Obviously not all of these games are on the C64 Mini, there are a few different ones here and there. But yeah, very cool, I really like it. We'll maybe quickly boot up Impossible Mission, see it working. 
So you can go up and down the ladders here and, yeah, and you can actually jump over the robots if you want. Like so. Um, and make your way through the rooms. Anyway, that's interesting. Let's get this booted up to the VS and we'll go through it in a lot more detail. Okay guys, this is going to be a long video because there's 14 games to cover. I'm going to put in some proper gameplay here so that you can make the decision if this cart is for you or not. And some commentary as we go. So we're going to start with Alley Cat. Um, and this is a kind of a shoot em up come racing game. Not sure which one it's supposed to be. Um, there's icons you can actually grab um, on the surface. Um, and this one's actually from Andrew Braybrook, who had done some really decent games, if I recall. Um, let me see. So let's get started. This one's from 1986. Simple controls to start with, pretty much shoot with the B button and hold the up and down buttons to move your ship up and down. So, just get started. There are some different courses you can select. You can see the logos on the bottom, but if you look here, you can actually move the ship up and down um, closer to the surface, but if you do that, it is trickier. You'll probably end up crashing and burning, um, but you obviously can gain more points by going through some of the, I think it's the slathoms, you can see the one on the left there. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. It's a kind of a shooting game, I think, but it's a race as well. It's really odd. You're not racing against anyone, though. There's just other sort of objects to shoot at. It's a bizarre game. Not really my favourite. It's not terrible, but I think it's just a bit of a strange, strangely designed game that doesn't really seem to have a lot of purpose. But it's very playable. It can be fun. Um, you obviously need to avoid all the obstacles and keep going as best as you can. But I've never really figured out the point of it. It is quite fast, as you can see. But obviously I've done a lot there without actually picking up any of the, the sort of things on the surface. Try to avoid that, because as soon as you go down to the surface, it gets a lot trickier and you will probably most likely die. Crash and burn pretty quickly, as you see. <laughs> My trying to do that, and yeah, I didn't last very long. Still, it's a decent game. It's okay. It's not amazing, but it's a decent game. Okay guys, moving on to the second game, which is Battle Valley, um, and it's another kind of shoot em up you can play this as a two player game um, as well, but it's obviously chances each, I believe, I think, you can't play at the same time. Um, it's another one of these ones from the sort of budget range, there's quite a few on here, which was obviously games that you could get for about 2 99 or 3 99 at the time. Um, and you can either control the helicopter or the tank, and that's quite important, you need to go actually between the two of them. Quite in-depth um, controls here, I'll try and explain the controls as we play through the game and get started. It's quite cool, there's some nice sound effects in the, the game. Um, and there are options here that you can access using the on-screen uh, keyboard. So if you press the select button, you'll bring the keyboard up. You can change any of these options, but you don't need to. How it's uh, set up here is fine. Just press the fire button on the B button and get started. So don't need to mess about with that at all. So you see you've got a countdown. I think you need to sort of destroy all the, the targets within that time period. If you actually die, you I think you lose something like five minutes off the time. Um, and your rockets and shells are limited. So if you start off, if you want to be the helicopter, just press up on the D-pad. If you want to be the tank, then just press left or right and you will go. Um, I find the helicopter a little bit tricky. I think it's better to clear out the enemies first by using the tank and then later on you can maybe bring the helicopter out uh, and do some of the things that you need to do with the helicopter, like place um, fix the bridge, to be honest, that's one of the things you can do. You've got a winch that you can utilise. Now, the controls are kind of strange. You can go back and forward, but you need to double click on the, the A button to stop, and then you'll turn around and you can go the opposite direction. And you can speed up as well, which I'll explain further in the video, and you can, you can see here, you can actually move the turret and the tank to maybe aim different directions when you're firing pressing the B button. It is quite tricky, sometimes some of the enemies are a little bit trickier to actually destroy. You find yourself probably taking a lot of damage, um, not deliberately, more so because of the way the sort of game is designed. But try and take out as many targets as you possibly can. They all have some sort of purpose. Um, it's quite an addictive game, I find myself really enjoying it. And once you figure out what you need to do, I think you really need to destroy a lot of the targets. That's basically that, but it's a really fun, enjoyable game. Okay. 
Now, as mentioned previously, guys, you can actually speed up the helicopter or the tank by pressing on the shoulder buttons. I think it's the R1 button um, on the D-pad, and you can go extremely quickly. Um, just need to be careful. Obviously, doing this at the start of the game isn't the best idea because you will most likely crash and there's too many men enemies and you will probably not last very long. Also, there are uh, opportunities in the middle of the game somewhere. You can um, stop at this little point and you can get some extra ammo added. Um, if you're running low, this is really cool. So you can obviously use the helicopter. Once you've cleared out the enemies, it's probably better to get the helicopter out. You can pick up um, pieces here that you can then um, cover the gap that's on the bridge in the middle of the level so that then the tank can go across. Um, I've not really worked out how to complete the, the actual levels yet. I'm still sort of working my way through it. It is a tricky game. You need to to understand all the bits and bobs that go with it but it's really good fun I actually really enjoy playing this one it is good but yeah I've died too many times and you can see my countdown is pretty much over okay moving on to game three this is gateway to Apshai which is a kind of a action RPG game from 1983. You can probably tell by looking at the graphics that it is quite an old game from the Commodore 64 back catalogue. Um, and yeah, it's looking a little basic, but don't let that fool you. It is a very good game. There's quite a lot of depth here, really. Um, it reminds me of the Intellivision uh, game that we have, Tower of Doom, which is kind of a similar style game. The graphics in the Intellivision game is probably better right enough, it's probably the better game to play. But let's have a look at this, there's a lot of um, options there on the, the D-pad to use um, and it does get a little bit complicated, I feel the controls are a little bit odd, but they've done a good job here because in the original game a lot of the controls were mapped to the keyboard, um, but the keyboard um, sort of input here is quite minimal, you can use this to select your dungeon. Just hold down the select button, you will bring up your keyboard again. And just select your dungeon, and that's basically it. Um, every other sort of action has been mapped to one of the buttons, which is quite helpful. It's still a little bit messy right enough. But here you start, you, you can pick up your sword. Press the, the A button to use the action as fight, and then just press B to swipe your sword. Now, if you want to access this, you need to press the X button to activate the keys, and then press B button to open the door. And there's a lot of other different things here, like drop items, um, check supplies, you can obviously change your uh, weapon that you've got. Um, it's pretty complicated. I feel the button map is a little bit strange. It does get a little bit complicated in how to, to mani uh, sort of manipulate it and figure out which buttons are doing what. It, uh, some of the buttons do cycle through the options and it does get a little bit confusing. So not sure it's the best, but I think they've done a good job from what uh, was there originally. Um, obviously it was mapped to a keyboard. Um, but it's not bad. Obviously there's a lot of sparse, um, sparsely populated areas a few enemies pop up here and there, and it does remind me very much of the Intellivision game that we have. Um, and I think that Intellivision game was around about a similar time period as well. Maybe it was actually slightly later um, in the 80s than this. But it's not bad. It's actually quite cool. I think in the day, this would have probably been really good fun to play. And I think it would have been probably way ahead of its time. Um, and it would have felt pretty cool. But this is off the way back in 1983. I'm not sure it holds up particularly well. And if anyone's really that interested, they want to play it now. Um, but it's still quite a cool game. It's not a bad game at all. I, I still quite enjoyed playing through it. Okay guys, now moving to game 4, which is definitely a classic from 1984, Impossible Mission. Um, there was a few sequels, maybe one or two, but yeah, this is a kind of a platformer, 
style game, um, action game for one player and you need to sort of find the puzzle pieces by searching the items of furniture in each of the rooms while avoiding all the traps, all the robots and then try and find some uh, passwords to sort of deactivate the robots etc, that kind of thing. The controls are pretty simple, um, it seems a lot more complicated than, than you would think, but yeah, it's a very iconic game. Iconic for that speech, maybe the speech is more um, famous than the actual game, but yeah, it's really cool. Um, there's obviously furniture, you need to push up um, to activate the furniture on your d-pad and press B to jump and then you can go up and down the platforms here. But you really need to go through the levels, avoid all these robots, search the furniture for missing pieces, passwords, etc. and then move on to the next room without, you know, dying. <laughs> Which you'll probably do quite a lot. I think each time you die you have a certain time limit, I believe, and if you keep dying I think it, the, the clock keeps coming down further and eventually it'll, it'll hit the point and you will, it'll be too late. You can't escape from um, this part that you're trying to escape from. Um, yeah, so there's a puzzle piece that I've actually found. It's a really cool game. I think in the day it would have been really frustrating. I think having save states will probably open this up to... Um, people may be finishing it f with a little bit more ease perhaps, I mean it's still a tricky game, you can see it's a pretty large game, there's a lot to, to see here, you can see that green screen, that is basically the size of the game, it's absolutely huge, um, so I don't think people will finish this quickly, I might, I might be wrong on that, but I think it's a pretty tricky game, I don't think people will finish it first time round, um, and there's certainly a lot to see here and you will probably die a lot as usual. I'm looking forward to trying through this, I never got anywhere back in the day, so actually getting this on the Evercade and trying to make some progress with those safe states is actually quite intriguing for me, I'm really looking forward to discovering what this game's got to offer. Now at present I've only got actually two pieces and I'm not entirely sure what to do with them. Um, I think it's obviously too early to try and solve some sort of puzzle but yeah I'm not sure of this part. Definitely need to check up um, the manual and some of the background to this game and this part especially and what we need to do. But yeah I'm looking forward to trying to figure that out. Um, please beware, please use that manual because it has a lot of info in all of these games. Destroy him, my robot. Okay guys, moving on to game 5 which is Iridus Alpha from the legendary Jeff Minter. Um, now if you don't know, Jeff Minter done a lot of kind of crazy games, really weird games, usually involving camels. <laughs> but yeah, he, he, they were still decent games but they were weird, no doubt about it. But he was legendary because he made some absolutely cracking titles that definitely caught the eye. And this one definitely catches the eye. But I still haven't got a clue what the heck I'm supposed to do in this game, even referring to the manual and, I don't know, it's such a bizarre game. It's very colourful, quite bright, there's a lot going on, there's, it's very fast. You seem to go between a different number of characters here, destroy everything on screen. Yeah, it's weird, it's obviously a kind of shoot em up, but honestly not got a clue what's going on. It's so fast and furious, just try and shoot everything that you see. Then you change into this kind of caterpillary thing, and then later on you actually change into a kind of a other creature that um, bounces across the 
the sort of platform or, or the, the sort of ground it's really odd but yeah this probably sums up Jeff Minter games completely weird brilliant who knows playable yeah but yeah still not really sure what to make of this one <laughs> it's cool weird a little bit of fun but yeah utterly weird <laughs> Guys, moving on to game six, which is Jumpman. And um, this one's also from 1983, and it's a kind of a platform game in the style of Donkey Kong. Um, and you know, I really enjoy this one. The graphics are absolutely terrible, but it, it's still a very playable game. Once you get used to the controls, um, it's basically collect everything on the screen, avoid the the sort of enemy and the fire um, and anything else that's getting hit at you, avoid falling. And that's it. I actually really enjoyed playing this one though. I never did play it back in the day. It's very simple. There's a jump button and you use the d-pad to move the character. That is it. Very, very simple. Um, I don't remember playing this back in the day as I said. I think it might have just been before my time. Um, I didn't get a Commodore 64 till the early 90s. 1990 to be exact and obviously this is long after this game and I never obviously heard of it or picked it up at any point but it's still a good game and I'm glad to have played it now you obviously need to utilize the on-screen keyboard again press select then choose which game option you want just start at the beginning to get yourself familiarized with the actual game then choose the number of players and press the enter button at the bottom right on the keyboard and you are good to go and that's basically it. So yeah, you can see the graphics are pretty awful for back in the day. It's clearly heavily inspired by Donkey Kong. And you've got seven uh, men, jump men to start with. And, and that's quite generous. That ain't bad at all. You can obviously use your save states to try and um, make your things a little bit easier. And you need to collect those um, orbs and don't fall. Always use the ladders. If you fall from a height or any sort of height, you will die instantly and lose one of your men. And sometimes I don't like the ladders are a bit sticky. It's a little bit like Burger Time where you seem to get stuck on the ladders quite a lot. And sometimes you misjudge the jumping and jump completely off the platform to your doom. Yeah, avoid that sort of white thing going across the screen because if that comes near you, it will just automatically fire in your direction and you will die. Or jump off the screen just like I did and you will die. <laughs> kind of uh, annoying those things, but I really enjoy this game. I think it's very addictive. It's quite good fun. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to play through a few levels here, guys. Enjoy the gameplay. Um, I hope you enjoy this game as much as I did, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. Really, really addictive stuff.
Okay guys, moving on to perhaps the best game on the cart, which is Lee from 1984, obviously then it was known as Bruce Lee, and sadly I also missed this back in the day and never even played it at any point through my uh, Commodore 64 lifespan that I uh, enjoyed, but here it is now, it's on the Evercade cart and yep, I'm glad to now play it because it's absolutely fantastic, really love it. Very addictive, it looks pretty basic, but yeah, just like Jumpman, it looks basic, but it's very addictive, it's great fun. There's some simple moves here, um, obviously you need to maybe look at these options here, you need to utilise the select to get the keyboard, just press F7 to begin the game, and yeah, here we go. So, the object of the game is to collect all the lanterns that you see, these are those sort of white things dangling down. <coughs> and you've got some ladders that you can help. You need to climb up there, avoid the bad guys, or you can fight them. It really is up to you, and just beware of Incredible Hulk, who sometimes appears in the game. Um, he takes three hits to die, uh, and the Black Ninja takes two hits to die. So be wary of that. You can either punch them by pressing B when you're standing still, or you can do a flying kick by, when you're running, press B, you'll do a flying kick. It's best to try and probably um, avoid them if you can. Um, but if you need to, you just need to run and kick them and you will probably take them out um, as so. It is really good fun though. It's quite satisfying taking them out, but it's probably best to try and avoid them. Um, so you need to try your best, climb up um, all these ladders and collect the lanterns before you can open up the next area. Um, sometimes it's actually not clear where you're supposed to go, but... Um, once you've collected the lanterns, you can see at the bottom here there's a trapdoor. This will actually open up and open the next area. But yeah, best not to try and get too involved in the fighting because you could just completely lose a, a life or two. Try and avoid it if you can. But what a fantastic game. Absolutely fantastic. Really addictive stuff. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this one a lot more. And arguably, yeah, this could be the best game on the C64 cart. This is definitely an absolute classic.
Okay guys, moving on to Marauder. Now we're moving on to a few games that are probably not quite the greatest games at all. Um, and these are probably from the budget range again. And you can probably tell they're, they're okay. Um, this is a kind of a shoot 'em up game. Um, and I'm not really a big fan of it. This one is extremely challenging as KD says. Pretty basic moves. There's a smart bomb and there's a fire button. The smart bomb um, basically wipes out everything on the screen and you obviously only have four of them. But yeah, it's hard as nails. Just the fact that you can hardly s see the, the enemies before they, they're basically firing at you and it's, it's just it's hard. Not really my favourite. I just find this one too tough to enjoy. But there will be people out there that will really like this game. Um, but this one was very short lived and I didn't really enjoy it at all. But that doesn't mean it's a bad game, it seems a pretty decent game, graphics are okay. Um, but it's hard, it's just too tough. Even with the save states I think you'll really struggle to make progress in this one. Well, I'll make, I'll struggle with it, I'm sure someone will probably finish it easy peasy. Okay guys, moving on to Stormlord, another kind of budget game from back in the day, which I'm pretty sure I played at some point. Um, and it's a pretty frustrating game. Uh, so you need to collect the fairies through the level, there's usually a selection of fairies trapped somewhere. And it has a little bit of controversy where the fairies were naked in some other versions of the game. I'm pretty sure it was the Amiga version. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's not the greatest game, it's pretty basic. Basic attack and jump moves, uh, yeah, not my favourite. You can obviously choose between keyboard and joystick, but you're never going to choose keyboard for this, are you? So at the start of the game, you need to go left um, to get started, because you need to pick up a key to enable access through a door on the right-hand side. And right away, I find it's just unavoidable to lose a couple of lives trying to avoid this purple blob from jumping up and down. I just feel, maybe it's my timing, I'm terrible at it, but... I couldn't find a way to get past that without actually losing a life or two. Pretty frustrating. And yeah, you've got some naked fairy thing there. Brilliant. Um, yeah, not the greatest game at all. And I find it's a frustrating game and it's you die a lot, but I feel as if you die not because of your own fault, but because of the, the poor game mechanics. Um, look at the, the way you're sort of firing this crazy fireball. It's going at a curve. It's not hitting anything. Really frustrating. Um, yeah, and you can use those warps through space to try and rescue those fairies who are trapped here. And that's it. So you've got five in this initial level to rescue. And you've got three lives. But oh, I've got three lives now, but I think you start with about seven. So you've got a generous amount of lives and you definitely need them. Because it's a very, very frustrating game to play. I think it's really down to the poor game mechanics rather than anything else. I just think... It's a tough game because of how sluggish the game feels to play. Definitely not my favourite on the cart. I think it's quite poor. Uh, but it is what it is. It's not a classic example of what the Commodore 64 was about. Yeah, it looks like a Commodore 64 game, but uh, it's very sluggish. I did not enjoy this one.
Okay guys, moving on to Street Sports Baseball. This one's from 1987 and it's probably better played with two players rather than single player. However, um, here we have it and yeah, it's probably not a great game at all. Just giving you a sort of heads up. It's Okay, it's baseball, don't have a problem with that. Um, but it's so slow and sluggish. It wasn't a good game on the mini and it's definitely not a good game here. I definitely question why we need to add this when it's so clearly a poor game. It's pretty simple, the controls are easy enough to use. However, trying to get started in the game is a little bit cumbersome and it takes so long to get going. So just be careful what you're choosing at the start. You've got obviously the field, that's easy enough, just choose that with the B button. But do not choose human here, otherwise this will do absolutely nothing after a certain screen. If you're choosing human, that's you playing a two-player game. That's okay if you're on the VS playing a two-player game. But on the handheld, choose uh, computer. Or if you're playing your own, choose computer and carry on. Then choose your team. Doesn't really matter. And it keeps giving you these options to change your fielders, change your players. Like you care, what's the point? Maybe you want to add your own name or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's very cumbersome, very slow to actually get started. Eventually, we will get started and... We will be on to the field playing and it looks okay the graphics are all right you've got a sort of straight on view and you've got a top down view on the right hand side now the the right hand side is probably the most important screen to look at when you're trying to hit the ball and i should have probably left that because that was clearly a ball but use the right hand screen because it's easier to try and hit the ball if you try and sort of look at where the ball is on the center screen it's almost impossible to try and hit it so use the um the right hand side screen try not to foul it just like i've done but it's a lot easier if you concentrate on the right hand side you will possibly time it right and hit it and i've honestly no idea why the, the sort of picture takes so long to throw the ball it's quite frustrating and, and the pace of the game is tediously slow. It's such a shame because I think all the game mechanics are pretty decent. It would probably be an okay game if things was just sped up a little bit. Um, I'm not saying it's terrible, but yeah, it's it's a little bit frustrating to play and you definitely get a little bit bored waiting on things happening. I think it's definitely better if you are playing a two-player game because then you can... Um, get things going a little bit quicker and probably get the, the picture to throw instantly and it would be a lot more fun. And just having a look here, I've no idea what these characters are we're playing against. They look very much like E.T. with red eyes or something. It's very weird. I'm not sure what's going on. But yeah, strange design, strange look. A little bit sluggish and yeah, the fun is completely took out it, which is a sad, sad shame. I don't think this game should have been on this card at all. So here it is, I'm now bowling, um, or pitching, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, it's not bad, you can obviously control how quickly you want to throw it and then press left right to swerve it and trying to catch the ball and judge where it's about to land is almost impossible. It does get a little bit frustrating. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's more fun to pitch or but not entirely sure. But either way, it's a bit of a sluggish game to actually play. It's not terrible, but it's not the greatest. I don't think many people enjoy it. Some might, you never know. Okay guys, moving on to Subterranea, which is another shoot 'em up um, and this one is okay. It's another one from the budget sort of collection back in the day, which would have been about $2.99 or $3.99, um, which I think most people have probably would have bought. I know I certainly bought a lot of budget games with the pocket money that I had. It's a pretty tough game, but as it says here, it's not really tough because of the enemies, it's tough because of the objects and environment that you need to go through. So very simple controls. B button to fire and shoot, that is it, very simple. 
Uh, graphically, it's all right. It definitely screams Commodore 64 as you look at it here. Um, the enemies are pretty easy to avoid for the best part. It's all about the environments and these objects to avoid. I felt that the collision detection was a little bit off at times, meaning um, you could think you're safe when you're not, and then you could easily die like here. I didn't think I was really touching anything, but you die. You can see here you need to deactivate this uh, drill thing so that you can get through. Um, hitting that little, it looked like a little alarm thing, but not entirely sure. But it's not the it's not bad to be honest. Um I'm not a big fan of shoot 'em ups, but this isn't the worst at all. But is it a challenge for your sort of shoot 'em up veterans out there? Probably not. They'll probably go through this pretty easy. Unlike me, I'll probably struggle with it. But yeah, it's alright. You can see here I should have been shooting at the bottom screen here rather than shooting straight at it um to deactivate that. But yeah, it's all about those environments and suddenly you complete the level without realising it does seem a bit rushed and sudden. Yeah, it's a strange game at times. It seems a little bit rushed and unfinished in places. But it's not the worst. It's okay. It certainly gets a pass for being a little bit playable. And here we are shooting some colourful grapes. Happy days. Okay guys, moving on to summer games. Now this is obviously kind of similar to winter games, where it's probably better played as a two-player game or with someone. Um, you can play up to eight players, be taking turns, it's obviously not um, one you need multiple joysticks with or joypads. Um, yeah, this one's okay, but I think it's probably not the best playing on your own. But please refer to the manual for every single game that's on here. It'll give you hints and tips. It's got a lot of detail on how to actually play these games. Because if you don't, you probably won't get a lot out of it and you probably won't understand how to actually play the game. you've got a few options that you can actually choose. You can complete in one event or you can practice or you can complete in all the events. Um, and yeah, and you need to enter your name, you need to use the actual uh, keyboard again. Press select and just enter whatever name you want to go by. It really doesn't matter. Then press the enter button. Now the enter button's just down to the right hand side of the screen, bottom right, the little sort of arrow pointing down that I press here. And then choose your country, listen to the national anthem. And once that's done with, you can either enter another player or press enter again just if you're playing on your own. Um, if you just keep pressing enter and names, then you'll probably end up with about eight names playing. Then you'll get the first event, which is the pole vault. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. It's all about timing um, with your pole. So when you run along, you need to press down at the right point to sort of put the, the pole in the groove and then... You need to sort of press up, then press the B button to jump off as you get to the top. So it's really all about time, and I have actually managed to do it, but not in the actual uh, stream here, unfortunately. But it's all about timing. Get it um, in the slot, and then press the jump button at the right time. You really have to press it quite quickly, and you will jump over. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't manage to do it in this particular time. And yeah, see, I put my pole down too early. Who oh dear? <laughs> yeah, no dirty comments, please. Okay guys, something very important here, there is a bug in the original game. If you keep uh, spamming the fire button or the B button, you will create a bug in the game. Now Blaze are aware of this, but if you don't press anything, if you just press B once, you'll be fine. But if you keep spamming the B button, you will get this screen, it will do absolutely nothing. And you can't continue with the diving, so be aware of that, it is a bug in the original game. Okay, there are a number of other events, you can maybe just practice these events. This is the, the freestyle swimming. 
Um, I think it's just trying to press the B button at the right time um, when you're doing your strokes. And that's basically it. I think it's quite boring to be playing um, a lot of these games on your own. You really need to be in competition with someone. But it might be a good challenge for high score um, challenges, maybe on some of the Facebook groups or in Discord, for example. It might be quite a good um, challenge to do and maybe set it. I think that's probably where it'll get some gameplay from, but playing it on your own is probably a little bit boring. But I did enjoy some of the events. I really quite enjoyed the uh, skeet shooting. I thought that was quite good. You could just move the cursor and try and press the B button at the right time to destroy the targets. This was actually good fun. I quite enjoyed it. I wasn't particularly good at it, but I definitely enjoyed this particular uh, event. Um, overall, I think the game's okay. I don't think it's amazing, but it's not bad either. I think there's definitely fun to be had, but I think it would be more fun. If you were playing against a friend or two, I think you would definitely have a laugh with it. No doubt about it. Okay, just when you think Beast Wrestler might be the worst game on Evercade, along comes Movie Monster Game to give it some serious competition. This is probably one of the worst games I've ever played on any platform at all. But yeah, it looks really good, quite stylish uh, art there um, on the game there, but oh, it's a pretty sluggish game. They've obviously put quite a lot of effort into the intro, into the, some of the graphics at the start here. This, it's, it looks quite good, it looks like you might be in for a, a really decent game. But yeah, nice little loading screen which is cool. You can choose whatever you want, Godzilla, the big Stay Puff man, or you can choose a tarantula. It doesn't really matter, they're all pretty much sluggish to move. You've got a few different options here. You can scream, you can atomize up, you can shoot web, or uh, if you're Godzilla you can shoot flames um, and destroy the tiny, tiny men. I guess they're supposed to be tiny, and everything else is tiny to make the fact that you are supposed to be this humongous spider. I don't know, it just doesn't work. I think the controls are unbelievably sluggish. It's a very boring game. Um, oh, it's terrible. It really is absolutely terrible. Quite possibly the worst game on Evercade. Um, not sure why uh, Blaze would want to include this game because it's absolutely terrible. I mean, I think at this point I would probably rather play Beast Wrestler. I'm not sure, maybe I'm maybe I'm lying, I don't know. I'll probably have to do a video about that and what one's better. Beast Wrestler versus this, I don't know. But it's oh it's dreadful. Okay guys, we're moving on to the last game. If you've stayed with us all this time, thanks for watching. Um, I've obviously left chapters so that you can jump to your favourite game if you see fit. But yeah, winter games, it's pretty much a bit like summer games. Um, it's all the same idea and how it's uh, how it works, apart from obviously you get different events because it's, <laughs> it's the winter. Um, and uh, I'm not really sure this works for me. It's pretty much the same as summer games, but ideally you want to be... Um, playing against a, a friend or a competitor, but yeah, it is what it is. It works the same way you can complete in all events or just the one and take your choice.
Okay guys, so that's all the games played. However, there is one game that we need to maybe uh, unlock. It's the secret game that is hinted at with these cars that were included in the Commodore 64 collection here. And it's Gribbly Grobly. So that's the code that you need to enter into the secret code section on your VS and you will unlock a game. So that game is Gribbly's Day Out, which is from 1985, um, and it's not bad. I mean, as a secret game, it's actually not bad. It's probably better than some of the games that was included in the collection. It's certainly better than the movie monster game. It's just a shame that they didn't put this on the cart proper. guys so my final thoughts on the c64 the first home computer collection on the evercade now there's no doubt it's fantastic to have c64 on the evercade it opens up new doors to a lot of other collections and we know amiga is coming next year it's not the best cart let's put it uh, that way it's okay it's got some really good games but it's got some really poor games as well um i think Lee and Mish Impossible Mission probably the best games here. There's a few here that are quite good that I enjoyed. Gateway to Apshai and Jumpman, for example. There's a few stinkers that you'd want to avoid. But yeah, overall, it's kind of just okay. Hopefully, we'll get some more classics later down the line. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.